Welcome everyone. Thank you for your interest in becoming a celiac disease patient advocate through Celiac Disease Foundation's Patient Advocacy Program. You should have already registered as a patient advocate and completed the baseline knowledge assessment, which you can find at celiac.org slash become patient advocate. You will complete a post assessment after you get through all of the modules. This is the only module that is in PowerPoint format. The five other modules are in video format. Let's get started. The goal of this program is to improve your medical, scientific, and advocacy skills so you can better the design, implementation, and dissemination of celiac disease and non-celiac wheat sensitivity research. As a patient advocate, you will develop a working knowledge of current practices in the screening of celiac disease, current practices in the diagnosing of celiac disease, the underlying genetics that cause celiac disease, the pathway to drug development, types and phases of clinical trials, and label reading to prevent gluten exposure. You will also understand the purpose and unique features of patient-centered outcomes research, the roles for patients and stakeholders as partners in research, and the purpose of the Celiac Disease Foundation Patient Advocacy Program. There are six modules in this program that focus on patient-centered outcomes research, celiac disease basics, genetics, clinical trials, nutrition labels, and patient-centered research questions. This module will focus on patient-centered outcomes research. In this module, you will learn the purpose, goals, and unique aspects of patient-centered outcomes research, the purpose and goals of the Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Institute, and the purpose and goals of the CDF Patient Advocacy Program. We will try to avoid acronyms in this program, but here are some basic acronyms that you should be aware of. CDF stands for Celiac Disease Foundation. PCOR stands for Patient-Centered Outcomes Research. PCORI stands for Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Institute. CER stands for Comparative Effectiveness Research. iCure Celiac is CDF's patient registry. What is patient-centered outcomes research? Let's back up and put this in context. Comparative effectiveness research is a specific kind of healthcare research. Not all medical research compares two interventions directly. Comparative effectiveness research does just that. You can see the word patient in the definition. Comparative effectiveness research should focus on what is best for the patient, but this has not always been the case in the past. Patient-centered outcomes research is a kind of comparative effectiveness research. It specifically and directly answers questions that are important to patients. Here are four questions for the Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Institute to give you a sense of what questions PCOR is supposed to answer. Given my personal characteristics, conditions, and preferences, what should I expect will happen to me? What are my options and what are the potential benefits and harms of these options? How can clinicians and the care delivery systems work to help me make the best decisions about my health and healthcare? What can I do to improve the outcomes that are most important to me? To understand patient-centered outcomes research, it's important to understand that there are different kinds of clinical trials. The ones that have a strict protocol, that is, a lot of very particular rules about who can be included and under what circumstances, those trials are often efficacy trials. In those trials, the researchers set the trial up to, to increase the chances of getting a positive result, the theory being that if the drug is not effective under ideal circumstances, there is no point in taking the trials any further into development. These efficacy trials may exclude older patients or patients with other health problems. Sometimes, the exclusions are really extensive. Pragmatic or effectiveness trials have a different focus. They are intended to test whether an intervention actually works with actual patients in actual settings. There still will be a protocol. Certain people are eligible to participate and others are not, but usually these trials include a broader group of people. P 
patient-centered outcomes research tends to focus on pragmatic trials because those are the ones that actually answer the questions patients want answered. Here are two terms that are easy to confuse. One is about a process and the other is about substance. Research that has patient engagement is the process of including patients in all aspects of the trial. Research that is patient-centered is actually focused on a question of concern to patients. It is possible for research to be one and not the other. Say a thoughtful researcher came up with a great idea for a study which addressed a really important question about celiac disease. She quietly writes a proposal, gets funded, and conducts excellent research. She answers an important question that improves the quality of life for celiac disease patients. That is an example of research that has no patient engagement, but is patient-centered. The opposite can happen as well. The point of including patients in the process is to improve the quality of the research, not simply make patients feel included. So if a researcher collaborated with a patient group to develop a research question and continue to work side by side with patient advocates throughout the research, that could be considered research with patient engagement. But by itself, that doesn't guarantee it is patient-centered research. It is patient-centered research if the patient or research team has successfully designed research about an issue of serious concern to patients and their families. That's not inevitable. Still, the expectation is that, through meaningful patient engagement, we will end up with more and better patient-centered outcomes research. A couple other terms that might be confusing. Patient-reported outcomes is anything that comes directly from the patient. Temperature or blood pressure is not patient-reported, but pain usually is, along with mood, energy level, etc. Although certainly patient-reported outcomes can be part of patient-centered outcomes, there is nothing inherently patient-centered about patient-reported outcomes. Someone could be collecting data about a patient's mood to see if it's possible to more efficiently gather that data. This may or may not be a worthy cause, but that would not be an example of a patient-centered research question. Of course, if the research was focused on how to get more accurate information about emotional well-being because patients identified this as an unmet need, then it could be considered patient-centered. You'll hear other terms too. Some people prefer the term focused rather than centered, perhaps to avoid the self-centered insinuation. Many people resent being called patients, especially those with chronic conditions that they will live with for decades, so person-focused works for them. Community-based, participatory, collaborative, each of these have their own nuanced meanings. All that is important to know is the notion of engaging the end user, you, into the healthcare research to end up with more research that actually matters to patients. That is the goal. Comparative effectiveness research focuses on questions that matter most to the community affected, and now there is an institute devoted to this. They call the research they do, research done differently. PCORI is not the first funder to include patients in the funding process, but they are the largest, and the depth and breadth of engagement is really extraordinary. A few things to know about PCORI. It is not a government agency, but is fully funded by the federal government. The funds come from hospital and other fees that were part of the Affordable Care Act. They include both patients, which includes family members, and other stakeholders, which is a big bucket. That includes doctors, insurers, payers, nurses, pretty much everyone who has a stake in the healthcare system. The funding for PCORI expires in 2019. Let me pause here to emphasize a very important point. Patient-centered research is useless if it isn't good research. Unless rigorous methods have been used, any results will be completely unhelpful to patients or anyone else. But note, it is possible for a very clever, fascinating, well-designed, and meticulously implemented study to focus on a question or an issue that simply doesn't matter to patients. And a research question that doesn't matter even when designed and implemented using the best science there is, at the end of the day, doesn't matter. 
so they are equally important. PCORI brings patients, other healthcare stakeholders, and scientists together in every step of the research process, including selecting research topics to study, identifying research projects to fund, collaborating on the research team, communicating research findings, and building an inclusive merit review process. This material is from PCORI. They have some amazing resources, including a rubric that literally walks you through the process of designing patient-centered research. Patients can participate in planning research by developing the research question and relevant outcomes to be studied, by defining the characteristics of study participants, and by drafting or revising study materials and protocols. Patients can participate in conducting research by drafting or revising study materials and protocols, by participating in recruitment of study participants, by participating in data collection and data analysis. Patients can also participate in conducting research by serving as a patient representative on a data safety monitoring board and by participating in the evaluation of patient and stakeholder engagement. Patients can participate in disseminating research by identifying partner organizations for dissemination and by planning dissemination in the context of shaping study design and protocol. Patients can also participate in disseminating research by authoring manuscripts and presenting study findings and by identifying opportunities to share information about the study, even as it is in progress. Here is how we translate our concerns and questions into research. We must define the people, the options, and the outcome. Who are the people who should be studied? This is the population of interest. How can people make informed choices between options? These are the factors that people will consider when making a decision between options. What options should be compared? These are the decisions the research is intended to inform. For example, what are the comparative benefits and risks of nursing home, assisted living, and home-based care for older adults with celiac disease? The people can be defined as the group of people being studied. The options include the choices or options that should be compared. The outcomes are the good and bad things a patient can expect from each option to help them make a decision. The purpose of the Celiac Disease Foundation Patient Advocacy Program is to develop a nationwide network of patient advocates who can help design, implement, and disseminate results of patient-centered outcomes research that are important to adults and children with celiac disease and caregivers. That will be all for this module. Thank you for participating. We look forward to working with you as a patient advocate to further research toward treatments and a cure for celiac disease. Don't forget to complete the understanding check for patient-centered outcomes research.